KCBS, in partnership with UCSF Health, presents As Prescribed, a weekly conversation with leading medical experts from UCSF Medical Center and UCSF Benioff Children's Hospitals. Hello and welcome to As Prescribed. I'm Kathy Novak. A lot of focus on sports these days with the first Olympic Games to be held during a pandemic in Tokyo. So it's a good time to check in with pediatric orthopedic surgeon and director of sports medicine at UCF, UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital, Dr. Nira Pandya. Dr. Pandya, welcome back to As Prescribed. Thank you for having me. So let's start with those Olympics. What lessons have we learned about trying to pull off this kind of major sporting event during a pandemic? I think we're, we're seeing a lot of the same things that we saw with the NBA and the NFL season is that no matter how good the precautions are, there are going to be some COVID cases and we have to be very, very strict. So even though we have have dealt with this for many months now, I think we're learning that keep your precautions up, make sure people are safe, and most importantly, get vaccinated. I think that's the most important thing for these athletes. And most people will watch the Olympics on TV, but they'll be more plugged into their own kids' Little League games. So that's your area of expertise, young yes. athletes. How are you viewing what needs to be done when it comes to getting kids back into sports as school goes back in the fall? I think it's a couple different things. I think number one, obviously, you know, COVID precautions, which we'll, we'll talk about a little bit later. But I think more importantly is assessing where these kids are physically. A lot of kids are very anxious to play this summer they've started playing again and suddenly they're gonna go back into school and be very active. So I think it's important for parents to understand the kids' performance might not be as great. They may have some more aches and pains where they're when they're out there and really see sports as more as an environment in which they can have fun and reconnect socially rather than going out there and try to be a champion the first season you're back. Is there something they can do to prevent those aches and pains and then injuries as well? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we're almost tr have to treat our kids almost as, as a middle aged person, you know, you have to go out and run and, and bike and, and do some things because, you know, part of the pandemic, kids were naturally active, they played out in the yard, they went to the playground, they had recess. And this is the first time in a long time, the kids haven't had that. So get your kids out, go for walks, have them throw the ball around a little bit, do those things together as a family. So when they go to school, it's not really the first time they've been very active in a long period of time. On the COVID precaution sides, though, younger kids under 12 can't get vaccinated yet. And there are some concerns that with Delta being more contagious, maybe outside isn't sort of the catch-all we thought it was before. So what extra precautions do need to be taken there? I think that's a great point. And I think a lot of times we're being concentrating on adults who've not been vaccinated, but the under 12 group is a very at-risk group. And I think, you know, throughout the pandemic, we haven't been super concerned about children, but now that they represent that unvaccinated group, I think we have to be a little bit more cautious. So that may mean potentially shifting in the fall to kids wearing masks, even when they're outdoors, making sure they're masked at school, being certain that when you're with other groups, people are vaccinated or keeping those precautions. So I think that's the most important thing. But I think most importantly as a family that if someone is sick or you're, that your child's not feeling well is not to send them to practice. It's going to take that extra degree of vigilance to really make sure that people are safe. But I know a lot of families are really, really anxious that the kid's back to normal life. But I think we have to do it for the next phase to be safe. And you mentioned masks there, you know, whether they be outside or inside. There's maybe this kind of dividing line then with kids who can't be vaccinated really having to continue to wear masks where older kids and adults who are vaccinated have more freedom to take them off. How do you kind of explain that to kids who see that difference? Yeah, that's a great question. And, I, you know, I deal with my own kids who are young as well, too. They see mom and dad sometimes don't have to wear masks when they're in a safe setting. But I've actually found that a lot of the younger kids are actually more vigilant than a lot of the adults. They understand the seriousness of it. Even though we think it's going to be very hard for them to wear a mask, they actually will. But I think the most important part you can tell these kids is that it's about keeping everyone safe. And I find that kids under 12 have a good sense of community and they want to keep their older ones safe and keep their other you know, playmates safe as well, too. So just making it almost like a community good type of thing and allowing them this is the way you'll be able to participate rather than having to go back into the online not being at school. This is a way we can allow them to participate and stay healthy. Is that a reason for parents to continue to wear and wear, continue to wear their masks as well, even if they are vaccinated? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, especially with the Delta variant, I think there's more and more concern that even if you are vaccinated, there can be breakthrough cases. And if you do have a kid who's under age 12, I think it's totally reasonable for parents to set that example. And I think that as a parent, if you set that example, particularly if you want your kid to be involved in social things such as sports, Absolutely. I think that's one way we can really help that transition for kids when they make go back to school as well as go back to sports. Social things such as sports. Yeah, because I mean, kids have been 
behind screens for more than a year may not be used to being around so many people and interacting. How do you think they'll adapt socially? Yeah, and that's another thing that doesn't get talked about a lot. I think for a lot of kids, that reintroduction into playing with other kids, being with other people outside their family can be very stressful. So I think when a lot of kids do go back to school, if you're seeing behavior, particularly in younger, you know, younger kids, they're acting out more at night, they're having more problems, they don't want to go to school. I think we really have to ensure that that social transition is really easy. So I think it's important to prepare kids for that, recognize that they may have some more difficult days. How do we go about preparing them for that social development, though? Are there certain activities, certain sports that might be better for easing kids into it? I think team sports, especially, uh, you know, where they'll kind of almost forced to work together. I think individual sports can be a little bit harder, uh, things such as running or tennis, where you're not necessarily interacting with a lot of kids. So if you can get into a sport like soccer or basketball, where you have to work together as a team, that social interaction naturally comes. So those kids can get comfortable and then kind of get back into that normal routine. And then on the physical side and the injury side, are there sports that are better for easing kids in who haven't played in a while or maybe have never played at all? Yeah, it's a great question. I think it's not necessarily the particular sport, but the intensity with which a lot of kids do it. So no matter what sport you choose, I think it's important to recognize, number one, where your fitness level is. And number two, progress slowly. So try to get back into shape over six to eight weeks. I think a lot of kids are going to go in, they're going to jump right in at 100%, and they're going to get frustrated. So I really think sports this next year is more about participation. And if you do great, that's wonderful. But it's less about the end goal. It's more about the process of participating and being with your friends. So we're talking here a lot about all of the things that we have to be concerned about, the COVID risks, the physical injuries. So it may be putting some people off and just saying, oh, I'm just going to hold off for a while and not send my kid back. What are the reasons that they should be thinking about having their kids participate more? No, absolutely. And I understand everyone has concerns, but there's a safe way we can do this. And we, we know that. So I think the most important thing is that with physical activity, it's it going to improve your mental health. It's going to improve school performance. It's going to include improve the family life. So I think all those things are tremendously important. So if you take the right precautions, you can be safe and the kids can really reap the benefits of it. And that's why kids need to be at school. They need to be active. And we can do that as long as we're safe. And then by extension, should adults be taking all of these same precautions? I can imagine the moms and dads who are throwing the ball around and maybe injuring their own shoulders. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think everyone is getting more physically active right now. So the worst thing you can do as a, as a parent is go out there and try to recreate your, your young child's uh, athletic glory. So I think well, as adults as well, too, we need to understand where we are and try not to hurt ourselves. Always excellent advice. Dr. Nira Panya, thanks so much for coming back on As Prescribed. Thank you for having me. Dr. Nirav Panya is a pediatric orthopedic surgeon and director of sports medicine at UCSF Benioff Children's Hospital. And I'm Kathy Novak. Thanks so much for tuning in to As Prescribed. As Prescribed, every Thursday at 1.30, right here on the Bay Area's news station, All News 106.9 at AM 740 KCBS, and streaming on the Odyssey app. The proceeding was sponsored by UCSF.